Hi. Oh, uh, hi there. I didn't see you there. You just interrupted me during my workout routine. Because that's what I do. I break walls with my bare hands. Whether you fall for that or not, in this exciting visual effects tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a cool looking 3D destruction effect and composite it realistically into a live action shot. In this mini series, we're going to camera track a handheld shot, extract the camera data into Cinema 4D and build a 3D destruction effect and then render out all of those elements and composite them back together into our original shot in Adobe After Effects. This tutorial is going to be an upper intermediate tutorial and because it is a bit of a longer process, I am going to break it down into three separate parts. One for the camera tracking, one for the 3D destruction effect and one for the final composite. In this part, we will use the 3D camera tracker to track the movement of our camera in our handheld shot and export that data ready for a 3D program. Now, technically, you can use any 3D program that you like. For this particular series, we are going to use Cinema 4D. And because we're dealing with physics and destruction, you unfortunately can't use Cinema 4D Lite. You will have to use a full version of Cinema 4D so that you have access to all of the physics capabilities. But now, enough talking. Let's jump right into the tutorial. Welcome once again to the wonderful world of Adobe After Effects. And as always, I am going to start out with an empty composition. For this tutorial, I have a small clip called Tobias Smash here that I'm going to drag into my composition. And as always, if you do want to follow along with this tutorial, you will find a download link for this clip in the description of the video. Let me quickly disable the audio for this track and the video itself is just a really quick shot of me in front of a building pretending to smash through an imaginary wall. In this tutorial, we will be building a 3D model of a wall, we'll be destroying it, and then we will be compositing all of those elements back into this live action shot. Since this is a handheld shot, the very first thing that we will need to do is to track the movement of the camera. And because we want to place the wall in the 3D space of this scene, we can't just use the 2D motion tracker. We actually need to use the 3D camera tracker that comes inbuilt with Adobe After Effects CS6 or above. If you don't have access to the inbuilt 3D camera tracker, you can also use other tools such as Synthize, PF Track, or Mocha, but that's probably a topic for another tutorial. Before we jump into tracking the camera, I do have a little bit of a confession to make and that is that this is probably the fifth or sixth time that we actually filmed this intro. And that is because all of the previous times that we filmed it, we filmed it in a way that I was not able to track the camera afterwards. But rather than throwing those clips away, I want to quickly show you what we filmed and explain exactly why it didn't work so that you can avoid the same problems. Here I have a collection of my failed tracks and this one is actually the very very first one that we did shoot. I actually really like this shot, however the one thing that we didn't do is we didn't increase the shutter speed on the camera that we used to film it. And therefore some of the frames, especially during the fast camera movement, came out really blurry. Especially here at the end when the camera swings back up, everything is a bit too blurry and there's too little contrast in the walls and I just couldn't get a decent track. And if you are trying to place 3D objects in a live action shot, you need a really good track. So this one was a no-go, but lesson learned, always increase your shutter speed when you're filming something that you do want to track so that the individual frames have less motion blur. Let's move on to failure case number two. Now, this clip, we did increase the shutter speed so we have nice and sharp frames. However, we did commit another cardinal sin when you're trying to 3D camera track your scene. In order to extrapolate the movement of the camera in 3D space, you will always need to have two non-coplanar planes available. What that means is that you need to have two surfaces, two flat surfaces that you can track that aren't essentially the same surface. For example, here on the right side of the road and on the left side of the road are two areas, but they're on the same plane, they're on the flat ground plane. But for example, the road and the fence, they're two separate planes. And as long as both of them are always visible throughout the shot, you should have a decent chance of getting a good camera track. However, in this particular shot right here, we only have the ground plane. We can't even see the fence anymore. So while we can track the ground plane and insert a texture into it, this isn't good enough to get a 3D camera solved because we don't have two non-coplanar surfaces that we can track. So again, this clip was a no-go. Let's move on to the last failure case. And in this particular clip, we made sure that everything is nice and crisp. So we have a high shutter speed and we always have two surfaces 
the one in the back and the one on the ground in the shot. So I figured this might be nice and easy to track. However, this shot we didn't film with the DSLR. We actually shot this on the Canon G7X. Now, I love the quality of the Canon G7X, plus it comes with image stabilization. However, the image stabilization itself ended up being a problem. Towards the end of this clip, the Canon G7X stabilized the footage. However, in doing so, it introduced a slight wobble on the left and on the very right. So if you watch the right side and the left side of the footage, you will see just a tiny bit of consistent wobble because the image is stabilized around me in the middle. And this little bit of wobble really throws off the 3D camera tracker. And so when I tracked a wall into the shot, it just kept jittering in the foreground. And I couldn't figure out why until I noticed that there's just the slightest bit of jitter in the background because the camera has already stabilized the footage. So if you're using a non-DSLR camera, like a compact camera, like a G7X that stabilizes your footage, try to turn the stabilization off. You can always stabilize it in post, but for 3D camera tracking, that can actually be really destructive. That's enough sad history, but hopefully there's a few good tips in there for you to avoid. But now let's jump back into our tutorial and finally track our shot. Because this is a handheld shot and it's just a little bit too shaky, let's first apply a warp stabilizer to this clip. Let the effect do its thing. Depending on the speed of your computer, this may take a few minutes. Once that's done, we have a really nice and smooth shot here. A little bit too smooth for my liking actually, because I do want to retain some of that handheld action-y feel. So I'm actually going to drop the smoothness in the warp stabilizer effect down to maybe even 2%. I just want a tiny bit of smoothing. Let's play this back. Cool, that just took a few of those kinks out and it's looking much nicer. Let's pre-compose the clip with Ctrl, Shift and C. Let's call this one Tobia Smash Stabilized Comp and move all attributes into the composition. And now we're ready to track this shot. Now, the inbuilt 3D camera tracker will essentially automatically try to solve your camera. It's not as smart as tools like Synthize, Mocha or PF Track, where you can target track certain areas of your footage. And because I'm in the middle of the shot, the 3D camera tracker is going to consider me as well. And we need to kind of cut me out of this clip so that the 3D camera tracker will really just look at the static geometry at the building and the ground and a bit of the background to do the actual tracking. Now, we don't need to go terribly sophisticated with this. Let's simply return to the beginning of our composition, select our layer and duplicate it. And let's rename the top layer to Tobias Smash Masked. Then grab the pen tool and draw a rough mask around my shape. You don't need to be too precise. We do want to give a little bit of space because I'll be moving about a bit. With the layer selected, press M to reveal the masks and enable keyframing on the mask path property. And then simply step through and animate the mask path to roughly follow my movements. I do want to make sure that I'm never outside the bounds of this mask because we do want to exclude all of my movement from the 3D camera tracking that we're going to apply. Cool, I think that should do. Now let's change the mask from additive over to subtract and let's quickly disable the visibility on the bottom layer. So we should now have a video without me in it. So we should only see static geometry in this clip. You should never see me come outside this black area. Otherwise the 3D camera tracker might get thrown off a little. So I think that's looking pretty good. Let's take the top layer and pre-compose it. I'm going to call this one Tobias Smash Masked Comp and move all attributes into the new composition. Hit OK and now we're ready to do the tracking. In the effects and presets panel, let's search for the 3D camera tracker and let's apply it to our top layer. Again, this might take a little bit depending on the power of your computer. So if you have other stuff to do, it's probably not a bad time to do it. Once the 3D camera tracker is done, you should have a really pretty image with lots and lots of colorful dots and you can scrub through and hopefully all of these dots should always follow features or high contrast areas within your image. What I like to do is in the 3D camera tracker, expand to the advanced tab and here I'm much more interested in the average error. So this is the average amount that these track points are off their tracked pixels. So 0.38 pixels error margin is actually really solid track. Usually even 0.8 I'll probably still go with. Once this hits about one or above, something's wrong with your track, but this is actually a really, really solid track. So now what I can do, let's come to the beginning of the composition and let's define a ground plane. Now I like to avoid selecting track points that are too close together because a small error can actually throw this plane off by quite a bit. So I like to prefer selecting points that are a bit further apart. So for example, these two here and maybe some on this side. These two, yep, that actually looks all right. So let's right click and select create solid and camera. Let's rename this one to ground. 
And the other thing I'm also going to do is just because it's a bit of a wacky angle, I'm actually going to rotate it a little bit more into the angle that I would expect it to be. Cool, that actually tracks in pretty nice. And now, because all of our pretty track points are gone, we can simply reselect the Tobias Smash Mask Comp, which is the layer we tracked, reselect the 3D camera tracker, and let's define a plane for the wall as well. So again, make sure you select track points that do live quite long. Some of these track points don't live very long, which means the feature may not be very accurate. So somewhere here. So let's select that one, this one, and that one. And oh, that actually looks pretty good already. Let's try this out. Let's right click and create a new solid. Let's rename this one to wall. And let's scrub through our footage and check this out. Cool, that's looking pretty good. I'm just going to rescale the wall a little bit and move it over. Nice. Now let's bring back our original footage and kind of place me back in the shot. So let's disable the visibility on the layer that we used for tracking and re-enable the visibility on our Tobias Smash stabilized comp. And let's scrub back to the beginning and play this back. That is looking very solid. I'm kind of looking for slips in either one of those layers, but they seem to be sticking to their walls really, really nicely. So I think we're good on that. Finally, before we get to export our camera data into our favorite 3D program, let's create a null and place that at the exact point where I'm hitting the wall in 3D space so that once we're in our 3D program, we know exactly where to create the impact. For that, let's simply create a new null object. Let's call this one impact point. Let's drag it to the top of the composition. Not that that makes a difference. Reveal the layer switches and turn this into a 3D layer. Press P to reveal the position property. Then select your ground plane and press P to also reveal the position property. And simply select the position, Ctrl C to copy it. Go to your null object, select the position there and Ctrl V to paste the position on. So now your null is placed exactly where the plane is. And all I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just drag it over in 3D space, up a little bit towards the back a tiny bit and then upwards. So I'm just trying to place it in 3D space exactly where I'm hitting the wall. So right there is where I'm striking the wall. So let's make sure that tracks in nicely and that actually looks pretty good as the impact point. One last thing I do like to do is I do like to come into my text tool and just write a small piece of text. Let's just make this one white and just a little bit smaller. Again, let's turn this into a 3D layer, reveal the position property, and let's copy the position from the impact null onto our text. So we're essentially just placing the text in that 3D space. And let's just simply play back our composition. I just want to make sure that this text stays exactly where I expect it to, because otherwise, if you're starting out with a bad track or there's some problems early on in your process of creating a 3D integration effect, it's going to look pretty crummy coming out the back end, and it's going to be a whole lot of work fixing all of that up. So let's make sure from the get-go, everything is tracked nice and solid, and then we can export the data and build our 3D destruction. So let's just play this back. Cool, and that is really nicely tracked in there. Now, the rotation of the text is a bit off, so you can obviously turn this around so it's pointing in the right direction, facing the camera flat on but I think this is actually a really good track. So that is pretty much all we need to do for the camera tracking. And if you do want, you can stop here and then just use this setup to integrate all sorts of explosion and smoke and other elements into the 3D space of your scene already. However, in this tutorial series, we are going to take it a step further and start building a cool wall destruction in a 3D program. And for that, we need to export the 3D camera data into our favorite 3D program. With the release of After Effects CC, After Effects is actually integrated with Cinema 4D using the Cineware plugin. And so the easiest way to export this data into Cinema 4D is simply to come up into File, Export, Maxon Cinema 4D Exporter. So we can simply select that. Yes, there'll be a warning that we have some 2D layers in our scene. We don't really care, hit OK. And because we have text, you can either extrude the text as a shape, which is kind of cool, or preserve editable text. Let's just extrude it, hit OK. And then you simply give your file a file name, hit save, and After Effects will do the rest. We now have a Cinema 4D project file that we can simply open up and start building all of the cool destruction elements directly in Cinema 4D, or we can integrate them using the Cineware plugin, which personally I'm not too big a fan of because it's just a little bit too slow for my liking. Obviously, you're not limited to Cinema 4D. You can create cool looking destruction in 3ds Max, Maya, Houdini, and other programs as well. Unfortunately, After Effects has no easy way to export to them. 
However, there's a script that you can use on the aeenhancers.com website, and I'm going to put a link to that in the description of the video, that will export the 3D camera data from After Effects into Maya, Max, or Lightwave, or any other program that can read these formats. So I'm going to put a link to this script in the description of the video. And the way to use this script in After Effects, first off, you need to come into Edit and Preferences General, and this is very important, otherwise the script will not be able to run you need to say allow scripts to write files and access networks because obviously the export script is going to try to write a file to your local file system and if it can't it will not be able to run so make sure you have this option enabled hit ok and then you can come into file scripts run scripts file then locate the downloaded AE3D export JSX file on your hard drive just double click that this will pop up a little dialog and you can now export to Maya, 3ds Max or Lightwave. You have some options as well around setting the scale. Usually I like to set this to one to 10, I believe. I haven't used this in a little while. I think I usually go one to 10, close. Make sure you select the layers you want to export like the 3D camera, the ground, the wall and the null. And then you can obviously browse and specify where you want your file to be exported to, but I'm just gonna leave it on the default. So 3ds Max, hit export. And then you have a file that you can execute in 3ds Max to import all of your 3D camera tracking data as well as all of your reference elements. As I already mentioned, in this tutorial series we will be using Cinema 4D to create our 3D destruction effect, but using this script you can just as easily bring all your tracking data into Maya, 3ds Max, Lightwave, Houdini or any other 3D program that you may prefer. And that's all there is to it! In the next part, we will import the tracking data into Cinema 4D, build up our cool looking wall destruction effect and then render everything out for the final composite. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please like it, favorite it and share it with the world. Don't forget to subscribe if you do want to see some more cool filmmaking and visual effects tutorials. And if you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, just leave them down in the section below. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.